Hey ladies. <laughs> I am coming to you from my bedroom because I'm supposed to be on pelvic rest. It is one day post five day transfer. Transfer. Ugh. Transfer. One D. I am one DP. What is it? Yeah, one DP. Five D T. <laughs> Okay, so, if you've been following me my journey a long time, you know that I gave up on symptoms a long time ago, but since I plan to start testing on five days post five day transfer, um, I figured I'd come in here and give you some slivers of symptoms that I'm having. So, it's the end of one of day one and um, it's about 9 23 p.m. I'm already in my bed um, I've been in the bed all day I get up from time to time you know I got up I fed the kids all that great stuff but okay so um, as far as symptoms I don't really have any um, or any that I think really matter at this point so the only thing I can say is I don't have any like frequent urination or anything like that. But I have an odd heaviness in the lower bit of my abdomen. Could be maybe a little inflammation from the procedure yesterday. Who knows? Um, I don't know. But I just feel a little heaviness, a teeny tiny bit of bloat. But I've also been eating foods I probably shouldn't be eating because, well, I'm trying to take a load off so uber eats has been my best friend and well uber eats doesn't exactly bring me the good stuff <laughs> by good i mean keto so i haven't been eating that great but i'll get back to it on monday um so i'm just gonna rest up today and rest up tomorrow and i'll try to take it easy on uber eats tomorrow but anyway um probably the most prominent a symptom that I have right now is just feeling hot so like right now I'm in the bed but I'm not under any covers I had to turn the thermostat down um, the air I had to turn the air down so instead of it being on 30 75 it's on 78 it's currently 70 78 is kind of where I like to live um, in the house it's currently 76 degrees on the thermostat and I am burning up. <laughs> like, I am, I just feel so hot. Like, if I'm under covers, I'm too hot. So I decided to take my temperature. And it was 98.68. It's a basal thermometer, so I get the extra decimal. But, that may seem normal. Like, okay, you're not running a fever, you know. But I don't feel, like, hot, feverish, because then I would feel cold. I just feel warm and I've been borderline anemic most of my life so to feel warm means my body temperature is up so my normal uh, body temperature is is usually like around 97 so my body temperature is definitely heated up now I did ovulate so I have progesterone running through my system right now we could we can blame that for the extra heat um, that I'm feeling right now. Um, now my doctor did prescribe progesterone for me to take. I do have progesterone and oil here that came with my very first IVF box of meds. But um, the doctor was concerned about me giving myself the shot. So he decided he wanted me to do suppositories, which I have taken suppositories before. All three of my IUIs, I um, had suppositories. But there was a little bit of drama with insurance regarding the suppositories that he prescribed prior. So the suppositories that he was prescribing during my IUIs last year um, were, uh, they were a compound formula that the uh, pharmacy does themselves. So... 
that was fine. Probably cost me $10 um, to fill that. So that's what he prescribed again, but at a higher dose. It was like 50 milligrams of progesterone. He prescribed 100 milligrams of progesterone, and then he wants me to take it um, twice a day. So Freedom Fertility got back to me, the pharmacy, and basically said my insurance is not covering the compound formula, and if I wanted to get it, it would cost me 300 and some odd dollars. Um, yeah, no. Not doing that. The doctor will just have to prescribe something else. Or I can just take my progesterone and oil shots. So, um, we called the doctor back. Because, um, uh, Freedom Fertility, while I was on the phone with him, he checked to see if, um, my insurance would cover, like, Prometrium. So, um, it did. And so, um, I called... That night, left a message uh, with the doctor letting him know that my insurance would not cover the compound formula. If he wanted to pre prescribe something else like Prometrium, he would have to do that. So, um, also, the pharmacy called him the next morning. They got it all straightened out. I guess he sent him the script for the Prometrium. And so, what I have now is a generic version of Prometrium. It is, I don't know, really, if you can see that they're little pearls and um, I haven't opened it because I haven't taken any of it yet so at my transfer um, my RA kept asking me if I had my progesterone and I said well it's coming it should be coming today but I didn't know I wouldn't get home until like 6.30 in the evening but um, after being out all day but um, when I got home they were in my door waiting for me. Okay, great. But uh, he told me he wanted me to start taking them today um, in the morning and the night. Well, <laughs> like I told you before, the doctor says, you're just going to do what you want to do. Um, yeah, my body, my life, my mind, you know, you can prescribe the medicine, doc, but you can't make me take it. And the reality is, um, this was a natural cycle. And... There's no reason to believe that I need progesterone supplementation. So, I can wait to take it to when I'm when I'm ready to take it. And to be quite honest, I don't want to introduce extra progesterone to my system while I'm still in my receptivity phase because I don't want to mess that up. Um I want to get past my receptivity window and go from there. So, I will start taking my progesterone tomorrow, not today. Um, now, the doctor has never, like, given me a blood test to even see if I needed progesterone supplementation. So, I don't know why he thinks that he, he was questioning it himself uh, when we were at my line and check. So, he wasn't sure immediately whether he should even supplement it or not given that it was a natural cycle so when you have a medicated cycle it's important to supplement progesterone because your body did not generate the hormones in the earlier part of the cycle <laughs> right so the body tends to take a step back when um, you're being supplemented with hormones so for that reason your body is not going to kick up and generate progesterone like it should so it needs to be supplemented difference here is I didn't have any hormones earlier this was all a natural cycle FET so it's questionable whether I need to supplement progesterone or not but even with the medicated IUIs this is a higher dose of progesterone than he prescribed before so I don't know what he doing here but anyway, I guess he's trying to make up for the fact that I'm not taking progesterone and oil. But what he needs to understand is that I'm not taking progesterone and oil. I don't need that strong dose of progesterone because I, it wasn't a medicated cycle. So I don't know. I don't want to say I don't need it because we haven't done any blood work to indicate whether I need it or not. Or how much I need or anything like that. So... I don't know. I'll start taking it. I'll start taking them tomorrow and we'll see how it goes. I know 
a lot of you ladies out there who has done um, progesterone suppositories had a lot of bad experience um, with it. The compound formula that I was taking before, I didn't have a bad experience with at all. Um, I don't know about these pearls and what that will do. But at any rate, I'm still taking my, like, probiotics and stuff. So, you know, we're keeping the healthy uh, flora of bacteria, of good bacteria, um, all in the system and everything. So, that's it. I've rambled on for over 10 minutes. But basically, um, that's it for my J1 symptoms. I mean, other than going crazy out of my mind because I can't really move around like I want to. It's really crazy because sometimes I get to the weekend and I don't want to move. So I kind of just lounge around all day on my own. But now someone's telling me that I need to lounge around all day and I'm feeling some type of way about it. So... I don't know. I'm trying my best. I'm catching up with the DVR. I haven't been able to watch TV in a good week and a half, two weeks. So I am catching up on the DVR. Um, I won't say that I'm resting. I haven't been napping or anything, but I slept till after 10 a.m. this morning. So I guess that counts for something. But I think it was like 12 o'clock when I went to bed. I can't remember what time it was um, when I went to sleep, but I was incredibly sleepy. So, um... I did manage to capture my weight this morning. It wasn't the best, especially since I didn't eat the greatest the night before. It was 246.8. That was better than what the scale said right before my transfer. But I did also have a ton of water on my system. I weighed in about 250 right before uh, the transfer. So it is what it is. I, <laughs> I know it's water and waste. I know that. Uh, doctor may not know that, but I know that. And um right now you know i'm trying to take it easy so standing up over the stove and cooking is probably not the best idea for these couple of days so i'm trying not to like go overboard but <clears throat> enjoy the fact that i'm not really dieting so i'm continuing to take my meds continuing to take my supplements I did check on the ashwagandha. I said I would check on the ashwagandha. I checked on the ashwagandha last night. I took it yesterday morning. But um, what I found last night is that ashwagandha falls into a category that doesn't rule it out from being a herb that could cause spontaneous abortion. So I did not take it last night and I will not be taking it for the course of the pregnancy. So it's not recommended um, during pregnancy. Uh, as far as uh, lactating during breastfeeding, it did say that uh, it's been used for many years for uh, to help women um, with their with lactating, so to be able to to generate milk. So can't take it during pregnancy, but you can take it during breastfeeding. Apparently, so no more ashwagandha. Um, hopefully, my sleep will uh, stay good. Um, considering that I can't take the ashwagandha and that my, my blood pressure will be good and that I can remain calm at work and all that good stuff. But that was something I was worried about. The ashwagandha was really helping me and then now I can't take it anymore. So that's kind of crazy. But, um, that's okay. Less pills to shove down. Okay. Less pills to shove down. But I am still taking, um, like my CoQ10 and magnesium and the B-complex um, the probiotic, the prenatal, of course, um, and all, all the other stuff. I am still taking that. I guess, um, there's a part of me that feels like I need to keep taking uh, these meds that I was taking to enhance my egg quality because there's a small part of me that feels like I might have to do another retrieval. I hope not. I hope not, but there's a part of me that kind of feels like that, so... I continue to take these. So maybe I'll just take it until I run out of them and then just not buy new ones. So we'll see. Till, or until somebody tells me to stop taking them. So that's what it is. As of right now, see, I just put this cover on. I'm like hot. Like I'm not sweating, but I just feel like I'm on like the verge of sweating. So I just feel so hot. It's almost like hot flashes. And, um, I don't want to say this is a pregnancy symptom, 
because I've gotten this before and there was no chance that I was being that I was pregnant. So I think right now I just feel warm and I need to uh get through this. In the meantime, I am wearing socks. Nice thick cozy socks. They're not fuzzy, <laughs> but they are thick socks because my feet um do get a little cold. So, um, I'm wearing the socks. I hate wearing socks in bed. I tend to sort of rub my feet until the socks come off when I'm under the covers. But as long as I'm kicking the covers off me, I need to have the socks. So, I don't know. It's a struggle. It's a constant struggle right now. But all for a good cause. All for a good cause. Oh, also, a while ago, I saw these in the store. And I said, oh, I should pick these up. And I had no reason to eat them. But, Brazil nuts, <laughs> I am consuming five a day. So, I had five yesterday, and I had five today. So, if you didn't know, Brazil nuts uh, are a source of bromelain. So, just like all the women out there eating pineapple corp for bromelain, I'm eating Brazil nuts. I don't have any pineapple corp. I didn't get any, um, but I am wearing a pineapple, <laughs> right, <laughs> that's close, right, <laughs> anyway, um, I thought about just ordering bromelain supplements, but I don't really need the bromelain that long, so I guess it's just easier, easy enough to just go with the Brazil nuts, so I'm eating five Brazil nuts a day, I'm not a fan of nuts, I do eat almonds from here and there, but they're smaller, but Brazil nuts have kind of a funny taste. Um, it's a little weird to me. I'm happy when I get the five down. But they're here so I can wake up, eat the five Brazil nuts, and be done. Be done with it. So <sighs> That's what's going on. Other than that, I'm bored out of my mind. Um, just trying to be laid up, but not laid up because the nurse was like, Okay, so pelvic rest doesn't mean bed rest. So, like, get up and get your own water. Do some walking around. When you take additional hormone, it puts you at risk for blood clots. So, you should be walking around and all that good stuff. So, I probably did a little too much. You know, feeding the cats and, and all of that. But who's going to do it? And the cats are in here harassing me. So, you know, I have to get that done. So, I don't know. I don't feel like I've been like bending over or reaching or anything like that too much. Um, I'm just doing the bare, the very, very bare minimum. I'm not picking up the cats. I'm not allowing the cats to like jump on me or anything like that. Um, Sky. Hi, mama. She's down here on the floor. She's been up here on the foot, on the bed on the other side um, all night, all day. Um, but when they're hungry, they do get to come in here and harass me, so. Um, hi, Ninja. Yeah. He just jumped up on the bed. Come here, Ninja. Do you want to say hi to the people? Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. He's a little shy. It takes a little bit to get him. Come over here. There you are. There you are. <laughs> so. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm good at lounging around when I want to lounge around. But when somebody tells me I need to lounge, lounge around, it's like, ugh, I don't want to be restricted. I hate restriction of all sorts. Right? We hate restriction. <laughs> so, I'm just. Right, Ninja? Right. Yeah, he wants me to keep petting him. Then when I stop, he's like, what are you doing? Pet me. See, pet me. What? Are, what what's going on? <laughs> but anyway, at least I have uh, my kids here to keep me company, right? I got two boys here to love me to death and a girl to get on my nerves, right? Well, she loves me too, but you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, I'm done rambling, I swear. We're 20 minutes in. Sticky Vividus to all those CTC. I'll see you tomorrow.